Hello everybody and welcome to another review of Drones Visual. Today I bring you the second part of the review of the FPV Drone Hobson H501S. If you recall in the first part of the review I covered what we get in the box with the H501S and its main features. If you haven't seen the first part of the review, take a look at the link above the video or you can take a look at the description of the video to find information about it. Now in the second part I intend to cover the flying FPV capabilities and video quality of this drone and anything I might have forgotten to cover here. Uh, will appear in the third and hopefully last part of my review. Now, the Hobson H501S seems to be a drone that likes to know exactly its current position at all times, so despite the fact that the little fellow can easily log to about 12 satellites over here in no time, it still kept asking me to perform a compass calibration procedure every time I would turn it on. Now this was a little bit annoying but not that much, because uh, the compass calibration takes no time so it didn't bother me much. Now I would like to show you how the calibration procedure is done, although probably most of you know these steps well enough, but still there are people that might have not tried this before, so they would like to see how it's done. There are two things uh, you need to pay attention during the compass calibration procedure. One is the color of the LEDs, they can tell you when to stop and when to go on, and the second one is the screen of the transmitter. You will also get a message there uh, telling you when to proceed with the calibration. Uh, to start the procedure, we power on the quad, then we proceed to power on the transmitter. Then after the gyro calibration is finished, we will see a message on the transmitter screen saying Compass Calibration 1. At this point, we will rotate the quad horizontally and clockwise until the LEDs start flashing green. And you can see that they have just start, started uh, flashing green now and then the screen will display a message saying calibration 2. In calibration 2 we turn the drone vertically clockwise until the message on the screen disappears and the lights stop flashing. Now the drone is ready to fly. Let's now cover the information that the dis this display and the transmitter shows after the calibration procedure is done. If we look at the upper left corner of the screen we'll see the voltage of the battery followed by seems to be the tilt while the opposite end of the screen shows the altitude and the distance in meters. Then on the lower left section of the screen we were able to see the number of satellites that both the drone and the transmitter are able to pick up followed by GPS coordinates. Now let's move to the upper section of the screen. There you will see a memory card icon indicating that the memory card is inserted. Then in the center we can see a timer followed by the icon of a video camera which indicates we are in video mode. Although we are not recording at this moment, <clears throat> at the bottom of the center of the screen we can see the current flying mode or default mode which is uh, in this case altitude hold. Then on the upper right corner we can see the current charge of the battery powering the transmitter which is already low despite the fact that I just bought uh, these batteries. They are pretty cheap but still it's kind of like eating my batteries. Now let's see what happens when uh, we use the photo and video buttons. First let's try photo. Pressing the photo button, uh, button I'm sorry, takes a photo and you will notice that the screen flashes once, uh, once we press the button and then we will see in red letters the, photo, the word photo being displayed. Now let's go ahead and try recording a video. Once we press the record button we see that the aspect ratio of the screen changes and the timer starts to count while we see in red letters the word record. Now let's move on and see what happens once we switch to GPS hold. Once we pull the switch up we will see that the current flying mode uh, displayed at the bottom of the screen changes and then uh, it says GPS hold. In order for the return home mode to function we must first have this drone in GPS hold. Now it is finally time to go outside and see how the Hobson H501S flies. I will fly at different times of the day and during uh, different weather conditions and will not only judge the flying but also the GPS hold, the FPV transmission and the quality of the footage recorded by the Full HD camera on board of this drone. Once the calibration procedure is done we can then proceed to unlock the motors by pressing both uh, sticks out outwards and the motors will start gently spinning the props awaiting for further input from us. Before flying, make sure that both the drone and the transmitter have found a decent number of satellites, at least 6. Over here, it can most of the time find 12 satellites, maybe a few less for the transmitter. 
According to the manual, the follow me mode will only work when both the transmitter and the drone lock uh, to at least six satellites, so keep this in mind. We were flying in altitude hold or the default mode and the Hobson feels like candy. It is so stable and gentle, very easy to control and this might contribute to a relative degree uh, to the stability when it comes to video recording. I think beginners are just going to adore this drone, at least when it comes to the initial flying experience. It feels great, so stable. Now let's go ahead and hit the GPS uh, hold mode, see how it behaves. In GPS mode, the drone will lock its uh, position and it will stay almost still. However, there is always a certain degree of drift and at times a slight change in, uh, of altitude depending on the we on weather conditions such as wind. Uh, the drone will eventually correct its position and now I, I will demonstrate how it does it. Let's uh, get close enough to the drone and I would like to remind you that in GPS hold is in GPS hold right now and uh, let's try to change, change its position by slightly pushing it backwards. Now, you can see that right after I push it, the drone uh, starts to slowly regain its uh, former position. We push it and it goes again forward. Let, let's let's uh, change now perspective. Let, let's have a different perspective using a wide angle lens so you can get a better feeling of how the drone behaves. Here I'm sneaking from behind now and I will catch the Hobson H101S by surprise. Uh, this is a stubborn drone, I can tell you. It just wants to keep its position no matter what. He's like, no matter how much you push me, I'll be back. I can tell you fellows that it will do the same thing in very windy conditions. It basically fights the wind and stays in the same position. Of course, you can imagine how the video recorded by the onboard camera will look like after uh, such a struggle. So, uh, so far I'm having a lot of fun with the H501S. Uh, I feel like a sumo wrestler trying to get a strong opponent uh, out of the ring without success. So I guess I will just go ahead and surrender now to a far better opponent. The Hobson H501S has defeated me. And don't think that this drone can only do gentle flying, oh no, it can actually do some speed as well. Uh, I was initially surprised that if you push it, it can certainly offer some nice pitch and roll, roll uh, angles. I mean, it's not an FPV razor, but it can certainly be f uh, a lot of fun to those of you wanting to fly through obstacles at a decent speed. And I will certainly, it will certainly su survive uh, crashes against bushes, but I would not advise you to hit a tree, because then there will be a different story. I haven't checked whether there are any other more aggressive flying modes hidden somewhere, but this default mode is uh, tons of fun. Uh, I just recommend you to find some uh, nice area with enough space to deploy the Hobson and then you'll have a lot of fun. Next, the next thing I want to do is to try the famous follow me mod. Today, as you can see, it's very windy, rather cold over here, so it's a good opportunity to see whether the drone can keep up. The drone is currently in GPS mode, so I proceed by pressing the elevator stick and the FPV monitor will display a follow me mode after a beep and then the drone will proceed to follow me. This function works perfectly, although it is a good idea to keep the drone a few meters uh, on top of you, just in case you need to quickly run backwards, uh, you won't end up kissing the drone by mistake or something like that. Now, let's change the perspective and see uh, things from above, just like the drone sees it. You can see that the, despite the fact that it's very windy now, the drone seems to be doing a fair, uh, fairly good job sort of stabilizing the video while keeping up with me. I'm just admiring my rare by looking at the FPV screen on the transmitter while I walk away. Next time I'll be using a bike, should be tons of fun and I'm really looking forward to try it. It is time to go to, uh, to, go to infinity and beyond. Now it's certainly not as windy as before, but there's still some wind and the higher you go, the more you can feel it. The footage that you're seeing right now comes directly from the camera of the Hobson H501S and I have not edited the footage at all. So what you see is what you get. The camera of the drone records with a resolution of 1080p at 30 FPS with a bitrate of 17 megabits per second. As you know, the camera is mounted, mounted directly on the body of the quad, so obviously any movement of the drone 
whether it is fighting the wind or reacting to the inputs from the sticks becomes apparent in the video and at times there will be some jello visible especially as the wind intensifies. Now I'm not sure if this will be disappointing to some of you, I guess it all goes down to expectations. I was expecting uh, things like this to happen, I mean no gimbal, the camera mounted directly and the body needing to avoid the vibration from the motors and the fury of the wind, it is something I saw coming. Yeah of course balancing your props and flying during very calm days will improve the quality of your footage but still you won't give this footage any serious use other than post it on YouTube, share it with your friends or just use it to spy on your neighbors. So I think those of you that would approach the Hobson with this mentality will enjoy every aspect of it but if you have certain standards for what you wanted the performance of the camera to be in terms of uh, stability or video quality then seeing this uh, could be a turn off. I think if you're seeking uh, to get some serious quality footage you might rather go for the Hobson H109SX4 Pro which seems equipped with a gimbal and all the bells and whistles. At this point here I have activated the GPS hold mode and I can tell you uh, it is certainly windy up there. I can feel it down here uh, and that fellow can definitely feel it up there. Those brushless motors are real fighters but of course consider that your battery will drain considerably faster in conditions like this so keep an eye on the battery if it's windy. One thing uh, that I didn't like about the Hobson is as soon as it hits the air the battery on the display loses one bar. This makes me really paranoid about the actual flying time. I was not paying much attention to the time at this point but in my next video I would like to concentrate a bit more on that. Now in case many of you are wondering, I would like to reveal to you the current altitude of the drone or at least what the transmitter says. Perhaps some of you would like to guess at this point? Go ahead. The current altitude of the drone is uh, over 120 meters, around 123 according to the transmitter and I could have actually gone higher although that limit, uh, I think the limit uh, that I heard before of 130 meters or something like that, I would bet money on the fact that this little fellow can go higher. In fact, I'm planning to take it as high as I can next time. Uh, also, one thing I want to tell you, I think when you reach 120 meters, you probably won't see the drone uh, on the sky. Here you can see the FPV screen and you can see that, uh, yeah, the altitude is around 123 meters or something like this. So uh, it's pretty high up, actually. Um, as I was saying before, once you hit the actually the return button, you will need to start guessing where the drone is coming from when it's flying that high. Uh, I have placed the transmitter on the ground, uh, on the point where the drone took off. Let's see after pressing the auto return uh, switch, uh, how close from the transmitter will it land. I apologize for the shaky camera, uh, there are a bunch of bushes behind me, so here it comes. It is landing, landing, landing and... Well, yeah, it's kind of like a little bit further than a meter. That's actually not that far. It's kind of like fair enough. Before going into the conclusions, I would like to give you an advice regarding this transmitter. Use some quality batteries with this transmitter, either Duracell or some quality alkaline batteries or some rechargeable nickel cadmium. Because if you follow my steps and you use to choose uh, to use, I mean, some cheap non-alkaline batteries, the, this transmitter basically will eat them for breakfast. I mean, they won't last even 10 minutes. So keep this in mind. Use some quality batteries. Uh, don't use some cheap uh, non-alkaline batteries, otherwise uh, they won't last not even uh, yeah, a short time. Now let's move to the conclusions, uh, conclusions. What I like from this quad is how stable it can be while still allowing you to develop decent speeds and sharp angles while flying. I like how good the GPS lock uh, works, I mean how, how good it is. You can try to wrestle with the, hubs, the Hobson and still lose. At least while uh, it is picking uh, up 12 satellites, hopefully it behaves the same just with 6. The follow me mode works smoothly as well. You can uh, go jogging or perhaps even biking with the H501S and it will follow you as a bodyguard. Uh, the build uh, quality of the drone is also pretty solid and the design as elegant as it gets with a great combination of colors. The flying range seems to exceed what I initially uh, heard, at least when it comes to altitude but I will do further tests both on altitude and distance and uh, the same goes for flying time. Regarding the video quality, well you saw it, it is shaky with jello so it's mostly to have fun rather than to use the footage for any serious purpose. What I didn't like about it was the battery, 
the design could have been better. I would rather use some kind of like a smart battery or something like that and perhaps improve the C rating of the battery. Although I must say that overheating was not an issue at all. I thought the battery might overheat because it's so close to the FPV uh, transmitter, but no, that was not an issue. The most annoying thing to me was the transmitter using regular batteries, I mean AA, rather than LiPos. I really, really hope, hope that Hobson reconsiders this and does some changes for the coming version. This transmitter seems to eat AA batteries for breakfast. Things that I did not try in this video, but I would like to try in the next one, uh, was the headless mode, trying to record video using the slot in the transmitter, uh, put the distance limits to the test, and perhaps, you know, try a um, mission planner or something like that. And well, this concludes my review now, and I hope you find that useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section and I will really appreciate any feedback. If you're interested in the latest news and reviews directly from China, please do subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you in my next video.